Bonjour, bonsoir, dear friends. Welcome to JCB Live. This is again today a magical moment in the Russian River. I'm with the master, Brian Mallow. Hello, John Charles. So good to see you. So good to see you. Dear friends, we are in one of the most telluric and cosmic place in the heart of Northern California. This beautiful sculpture symbolizes birth, the earth, and the sky. Mother Nature, symbolized here by the beautiful roots, the base, the rootstock, going deep into the earth and going into the sky. The human being and the rootstock is the connection between earth and sky. Why it is so critical is we farm here everything organically, biodynamically, and we've added a great sense of energy. What is energy? Is the energy of people, the passion of them acting in the vineyards. It's the energy of a sense of place. It's the relationship of the sense of place, its orientation to the sun, the moon, and of course the earth. And all that interaction working together and creating a maximum of energy and a vortex of passion that brings everything together. This is why this amazing sculpture, originally made by Peter Schifrin, one of the key sculptor of Sonoma, really brings all of us together. And as you can see on the top, not only the link of earth and sky, but the symbol of birth and the symbol of going beyond. And finally, why this arch, like the, of course, horns of the cow, both bringing the energy from above down to the earth and vice versa. This is what brings you to the Lodge Vineyards. And this is why today's wine style will focus with Brian on the philosophy of winemaking of the Estate Chardonnay and the Estate Pinot. So Brian, shall we go in the vineyards? Let's go. Let's go and taste. Earth and Sky took us to one of our block. As you could see, 7A, one of the most amazing block. I feel at home. This is the Morache 420A. So Brian, we're gonna taste. But let's talk as well about the estate. Well, our estate Chardonnay is divided into three different blocks. Uh, two of them are what we call heritage selections. So they're not necessarily clonal material, but cuttings taken from famous vineyards. This one allegedly somehow made it across the Atlantic from the, the world famous Montrachet Vineyard in Burgundy. We also have a, a small selection of the clone 809, which is an, a true clonal selection coming out of the University of Dijon. Yes. And then our, our native Californian, which is the old Wente, an older selection that's been in the States for many, many years and has been the backbone and foundation of great Chardonnays throughout the state of California. So this is exciting because we originally were so interested in Deloge because of where it is. Sense of place, terroir is everything. Terroir, as you all know, is the alchemy of the earth, the soil the plant and the weather condition. Cool climate nights as Burgundy. And Deloach was the best candidate ever. So we wanted to really create one of the most amazing estate of the king and queen of all whites, Chardonnay. So let's never think monolithically when we think Chardonnay. It's so many different styles, so many different richness, so many different textures that the world of Chardonnay is as complex as the world of Shakespeare. And you see that in the clones that we have selected here. The Montrachet in particular has ended up becoming this backbone, uh, this sense of acidity as well as minerality and length that it lends to this beautiful estate Chardonnay, where the 809 is this kind of succulent, rich fruit element that just lays on top of it. And then finally, the old Wente with its richness and depth and complexity and spice elements. So all three of those clones, or those selections, I should say, uh, play quite well together in this glass. Well, and what Brian has achieved is the continuity of what what happens in the vineyards and we want to be in the vineyards to show you how important it is to be organically farmed not only the soil is fantastic the earth is giving its best the rootstock pressure is fantastic as well and of course the clusters look so phenomenal for this harvest as well so this is the estate which really represents the pinnacle of what we produce it does and i i can't help but emphasize what our farming 
does to, to make this wine what it is. It is because we have this living soil that these plants are so healthy, so vivacious and alive that they, they produce this beautiful fruit year in, year out, making this one of the top Chardonnays, not just in the Russian River Valley, but I would say in all of California. You're gonna realize we're surrounded with butterflies. We have bees around. We have all kinds of insects. We have an owl just up here. We can actually hear her. She's asleep now because it's a little too light for her. And we have, which is so essential, a life around the vineyards that brings vibration to the vines and brings all what the vine needs in addition purely to its fruit. We also have that, that hidden part, that part that we can't see, that we can't hear, and that is underneath us right now. It is the soil itself. This is soil that is alive. We till every other row, which means that the soil underneath me right now, this is a network of fungi and beneficial organisms that are all working with our plants to help them scavenge the nutrients and make them stronger over that long growing season that we see here in the Russian River. One of the reasons why, again, I can't help but say this is this delicious Chardonnay. The goal was for us to create one of the most charismatic, most expressive wine from the Russian River in the league of the Côte de Bonne of Burgundy. And we need to tell you, and you should all do it at home or in your stores, or obviously in your own cellar, blind, compare, contrast the estates with Chassan Morachet, Meurceau, Puligny Morachet, and even Corton Charlemagne, and you're gonna be blown away by what California can bring to the seduction and the complexity of the world of Chardonnay. When we started seven years ago, Brian, I had no idea we could graduate to this level. So now let's maybe go to our red wine block and let's go to our Pinot and taste the estate Pinot. That sounds wonderful. And we're gonna see what Veraison looks like. Now the gift of God. And Brian is on one knee. Not that he's proposing he's receiving the confession. You know what the confession is? that whatever he's done the year before will be even greater this year. And this is always what we do in the vineyards at this time of the year, because he's holding two important things, the wine and of course the grapes in full transformation. So what is that? Because well, many colors. Yes, we are, we are in Verasion right now. And here in the Russian River Valley, we're looking at these beautiful Pinot Noir clusters just start to tur turn this deep, dark purple to almost black, and that's what they'll end up being. It's important at this time of year, though, that we're, we're cognizant that not all clusters are going to make it, and we're incredibly selected going through. And when we see these clusters that are lagging behind the rest, we remove them. It is a little bit of a brutal process. It's one that hurts, I think, all of us by removing this beautiful fruit that's so much energy has been put into. But we want to make sure we have those beautiful flavors to put into a wine like this. That's right. So natural selection, this is what life is about in nature. So we're going to remove some called green harvesting. And therefore, the food will focus into some of the key grape clusters that will make it and give that incredible juice that Brian needs because let's never forget a lot of the wine is made in the vineyards. Almost all of it. The, the total potential all comes down to these selections that we make and if we're not out here and if we aren't being brutal, if we aren't being selective and making sure we're removing this fruit that's lagging behind, we'll end up with a wine with edges to it without that grace, without that beauty that Pinot Noir is known for. And so we come out and we take our snips and we're gonna do two things. So look, this is a beautiful Pinot Noir leaf. As we discussed with Sophie on the JCB Live in the vineyards, this is that beautiful golden triangle that you see. So this is a perfect Pinot leaf, a little darker with amazing vein. So we're gonna to try to take some leaf away as well to make sure that the sun can obviously give its perfect performance and its rays into the vines, but we're going to keep some leaf exactly in order not to maximize the sunburns and the dehydration of the berries themselves. So it's like me right now on my forehead, which is shiny. If I stay too long, I'm going to be all red, and this is the same for the berries. We want to make sure that they don't shrivel, that they don't wrinkle, and that they remain full of that great juice and feel the shade as well of the late afternoon. So, Brian, you've made a miracle out of this Pinot. 
I would love for you to describe this 2016 estate because this is actually, dear friends, my favorite Pinot we make in the history of California. That vintage specifically is a departure even further high than we've ever produced. Well, it really comes down to having phenomenal fruit to work with. And the estate here at the Loche, with the soils that we work with, the climate, really provides that foundational aspect. But then we had our vineyard finally come into full maturity. All across every single block, we saw beautiful development out in the vineyard. And so every single block of Pinot Noir, from the four blocks of Pinot Noir in the front to the three blocks in the rear, had great development throughout the, the growing season of 2016. You see that grace that we see in the parcel cachet, that length, that elegance, that raspberry fruit element come out in this wine, but then you have the intensity from the front, that depth, that strength that people look for in Russian River. And people. what Brian is talking about is so essential. It's not just a vineyard designate, it's an estate. So we manage by the different plots. So the art of his skills is actually to put this alchemy of great flavors and textures together from the different part of the estate. Because even an estate like this one, where parcels are close to one another, you have differences. So the art of the winemaker is to identify the variants of those grapes, manage them differently on the sorting table and in the open top for manners, and then blend it to create this amazing estate. So it's really exciting, even though we say wine is made in the vineyards, without the fabulous conductor, the musical conductor, the chief of orchestra, nothing can happen to that level. And I need to engage all of you, wherever you are in the world, to drink this estate, because I really believe, Brian, it's becoming one of the most spectacular wine that the Russian River has ever seen. Well, I, I would say that we in the Russian River are blessed with fantastic terroir, and when you put the energy into farming in a state like this to the level that we do, my job in the winery simply becomes one of selection and making sure that we, we take the time to connect with our vines and carry it through the winemaking process. And that's why we have beautiful wines like this. It's like being a, an amazing coach for a tennis team, a football team, a soccer team, what have you. It's to select the best element and bring them together. And I need to tell you this wine not only has aromatic, this wine has texture, and the hardest to do often in cool climate Russian River Sonoma Coast, length. This wine keeps going and going and going. I'm still tasting it right now. And what do you think is the potential of 2016? Oh, to me, this is a vintage that's one of those 15, 20 year vintages. I mean, we're here in 2020 and it's still a baby. You can see that baby fat on the, on the edges of it, just waiting for it to kind of work its way off. I think another five years, it'll start to maybe uh, approach its peak, but I think it has many years after that to go. So I'm sure you're gonna have it with your son soon. They may have already tried How a good. little bit. So, Brian, give us a quick uh, update on the harvest because we are late July now. Yes. What? Uh, so we are we are approaching the end of variation in the earlier blocks of Pinot Noir, which puts us probably about 30 days away from picking these grapes for the for the initial harvest. Uh, the the front parcels of the vineyard are are as typical, a little bit behind, about 10 days behind. Um, overall, the crop is quite small in 2020, so I think we're going to see incredible intensity city really really pretty wines um, just not a whole lot of them so it's gonna be one of those vintages to savor when you finally get one of those 2020 bottles. magical vin sur vin French means wine on wine means the perfect score so you want to rush you're gonna have great colors great intensity yes. and I think you're gonna have a lot of depth I believe from what I see today it's gonna to be a vintage you want to collect and you want to serve again and again so both Brian and I are kneeing. Let's pray to all our gods that this harvest is always better than the last. And it will be. So the last moment now in the cellar where wine is gently resting to become an adolescent. So we're going to be trying and give you an overview of the 2019 vintage. So the same wine as we tasted the 2016 estate Pinot Noir now, Brian, tell us everything about what you've done here, because I cannot wait. It has been a while since I've tasted the 2019. Well, 2019 was a beautiful harvest. It was a very gradual vintage of small clusters, but quite a few of them. And so a lot of fruit intensity, but a lot of skin tannins to these wines. So they're very coating, they're spreading, lots of color, beautiful wines. 
So what we have here is coming off of all of the blocks of the estate. We picked this back last fall. We fermented everything separately. And just about a month ago, after finishing our individual barrel selections from all the blocks of the estate, we performed its very first racking. And so it's, it's time to come together and start healing together in the barrel once again. And so this is a blend across all those different blocks of Pinot Noir in this barrel where it'll rest until after this harvest. And then we'll start evaluating for bottling. With most likely the 19s, I'm seeing it as a slightly earlier maturing vintage. We'll probably be bottling this in early January. Fantastic. And what Brian touched on is small berries. That's called in French, mille rondages. Mille rondé means to have a lot of small berries, thick skin, tied together, and a lot of beautiful dark juice. And this is what we look for. And that year, he did a spectacular job from the vineyards to the winery to really extract this color. I mean, look at this Pinot. Beautiful color, just exceptionally dark, rich wines. We halfway through, and it feels we're almost there. Yes. Like I said, I think 19s, because of all that skin tannin and an absence of seeds, we're going to see these wines mature out and to just be very mouth-filling, coating wines, and structurally a little bit more available early on in their life. That's fantastic. Well, Brian, congratulations. I hope all of you come and visit from the vineyards to the winery to winemaking, and of course, wine aging. Let's never forget the choice of the barrel, the choice of the alchemy of the blend, really creates what we call perfection at the Roach Vineyards. We hope to see you soon.